Coming in. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship Yahweh. We worship the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We worship the I am that I am. We give you praise, God. Father, we bless you. Just lift those hands up. Hi, good morning and welcome to Scarlet Thread Ministries Sunday morning service. We are so glad to be here this morning on this beautiful day. And, um, you know, last week we were on the hills of Faramin and, um, you know, we had such an awesome time. But today we are superimposed. That's the beautiful picture of Faramin. You see behind it was also taken yesterday when all that mist blew in. But my dad will share more on that. Um, you know how he experienced that yesterday. Um, we just like to say welcome at this time. Come join us as um, we enter into a short time of worship and the word. And um, you know, I'll just like to open up with a word of prayer and a portion of scripture. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning um, for your bright sunshine. We thank you for life. We thank you for the air that we breathe, oh God. We thank you that you have been providing for us. We thank you, God, Heavenly Father, for family, for friends. We thank you, God, for strength in our bodies, oh God, Heavenly Father, to face each day, oh God. We thank you, God, Heavenly Father, for your love, for your joy, for your peace that's within us, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit this morning, oh God, that's dwelling in us to guide us into all truth and righteousness this morning, oh God. Lord, we just continue to bless you. We call you holy. We call you Abba Father this morning, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we say this morning, O oh God, that you are the one and true living God, Heavenly Father. You are mighty in battle, O oh God, Heavenly Father. We know that no matter what we go through, whenever we go through it, we know that you are there 
fighting on our behalf for God, Lord, and we just thank you for that this morning. We pray right now for every viewer that's online this morning that their hearts will be blessed, oh God, by the worship and the word, Heavenly Father. We pray, pray oh God, that, you know, their, um, their families as well, by extension, will be impacted, oh God, by what is to be shared this morning. We pray for your minister this morning as he come on to share your word that he speak whatever it is you have him to say oh god with clarity and also with effectiveness this morning oh god now we continue to bless your name in jesus name we pray amen so um matthew 5 the sermon on the mount it goes like this where jesus was speaking and he said blessed and that word blessed there it means fortunate or well off it also means um you know happy right so blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you so i'm not sure which category you fall in here this morning maybe it could be more than one categories but here jesus christ in his own words are saying blessed 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 are you whether you're being persecuted whether you're meek whether you're poor in spirit whether you hunger and thirst after righteousness, whatever it is, blessed are you, fortunate, you're well off, you're happy this morning, right? So be encouraged this morning, blessed. Whatever situation you're going through, consider yourself blessed this morning. So we'll dive straight into some more worship and then our minister, uh, my dad, he will come on and bring the word this morning and share. We give you praise, God. We give you praise, God. I am blessed. I don't know about you, but I am blessed. I am blessed. Blessed going out, blessed coming in. Uh, thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship Yahweh. We worship the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We worship the I am that I am. We give you praise, God.
Good morning and welcome to Scarlet Thread Ministry Sunday morning service. Um, you all might be a little surprised to see me speaking here this morning, but the pastor decided to give me a little bly because she was, she, she, she was feeling sorry for me, so she gave me a little chance this morning. Uh. So I hope, um, I hope I, I step up to the plate pr- uh, and, and, and I deliver exactly what God would have in mind or what God has in mind or what he would have me speak this morning. So before we, 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 uh, we begin, I would just like to start with a word of prayer and then we would move right into the... Into, what God has laid in my heart on this morning, because a lot of things have been happening lately in Trinidad and Tobago and the world, and I believe God is saying something to us, but we, we are not paying attention. We are so preoccupied with things that is happening around us, with things of the world, that we're not listening to what God is saying to the church, to his people, to the nations, and things like that. And I believe um, that God is speaking, but we are not listening. So before we start off, I'll just begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I invite your holy presence here to manifest yourself, O God. I ask you, O God, that your servant be here and every word that I speak, it will be as your very oracles. Let it not be my thoughts and my words, but your thoughts and your words. Let your Holy Spirit take precedence over this situation, over this service here and everything. Take control. Let me be here and let you be seen, O God. Let all the flesh be subjected to the spirit of the living God. And Father, I ask you and invite you to have your way this morning. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, um, I'm standing with Param in the background. I took that photograph yesterday after all the rain in Param and the mist was coming up. And this was taken from a place called Campbell. My grandfather, he named after my grandfather, Emil Campbell and and the Campbells and them and um, I went up there yesterday to look at some, um, to look at some, some work and, and that we have to do in the, in the, um, in the, in the place are designated for worship up in, um, in, 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 in Campbell. And what happened is that I saw the rain and I sat in the car and I, it has some people around, but they weren't paying attention. They're planting garden because this is crop time up in Parliament. So everybody planting garden by sitting on the car, waiting for the rain to stop falling and, I'm um, to come out. Next thing you know, I start seeing these mists arising and these views, uh, ski, you know, the view keep changing. I decided to pull out my phone and take some photographs. And this one is a, a photograph of Port of Spain with Fort George and, and um, the Cumberland Hill and the background. They're covered by the mist. And Port of Spain um, is in the background. And if we, we blow it up a little more or, or enlarge the, the photograph, you'll be able to see that I'm standing in the clouds and how close I am now. So when I speak, let it be as the very oracles of God. Okay? Uh, this morning, I want to say hello to all the people in Parliament who have been supporting us, all the people on, online, um, those people in Kenya, and that we're speaking to are right now trying to source some Bibles in their own language. I want to say, have faith. We're working on it. We don't even know how to pronounce your language, but we're trying to source the Bibles. We have people working on it out in Kenya. Is a place, I um, can't remember the name of the place. I can't pronounce it. I don't embarrass myself now. So, um, we're working on it, <clears throat> and we want to thank everybody for supporting us in the ministry again. So this morning, I want to speak on the topic, who, you know, and, and to ask the question, who is your advisor? Who is your advisor? Who is advising you, or who are you taking advice from? And I'll be reading from the book of Jeremiah, the, and Jeremiah is referred to as the weeping prophet. And I don't blame him for being the weeping prophet, because if you see people going down a path, and you see them heading down a road, the road to destruction, you would weep as well too. As parents, we weep when we see, <clears throat> we, we advise our children, and, and the more we, we advise them, we see they're doing exactly opposite to what that advice is. And, be, and based on our experience, we know that they're heading for a, a rough time, a rough road. But and what we do, we, we could only weep because, they, you know, sometimes they, they're over 18 and we just allow them to go on. So Jeremiah may not have been weeping because he just liked to weep, but it's because he foresaw exactly where Judah was going at that time. And I'll try to prove a couple of those points here. So my message is a, is, is a question, which is, it, 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 it says, who is your advisor? Who is advising you? And I'll be reading from Jeremiah. <clears throat> Chapter 17 and verse 5. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is what Jeremiah is saying. 
um, 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 chapter 17 and verse 5 said, And the word of the Lord, no, thus say the Lord, sorry, I was reading from 18. This is Jeremiah, this is what the prophets used to speak long ago. When they hear from God, they were convinced and they confirmed that they were speaking the actual word of God. And this is what Jeremiah was saying. Thus say the Lord. You know what that means? This is what God say. This is what God say. Thus say the Lord. Not Jeremiah. Thus say the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm, whose heart departed from the Lord, Yahweh. Cursed. The Bible uh, he said, Thus say the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm and make it flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless this word this morning. Continue to bless it. And you speak what you would have your servant speak this morning. And let it not be my words. I thank you, O oh God, for this, for this opportunity. So, what is happening here now? Jeremiah is prophesying to Judah. He's saying, thus say the Lord. Cursed is the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm whose heart departed from the Lord. Now, in these times when Jeremiah, Jeremiah was speaking, Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah and the prophet Nahum, they were both functioning in, 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 um, in Israel and around Judah at that time. And what happened is the prophet Jeremiah, um, he was, he was um, prophesying to and speaking to Judah, and the prophet Nahum was prophesying <clears throat> destruction, the future destruction, of the, the, the nations that attack, attack Judah. So here it is, Jeremiah focused on the fact that although at, at that time he had King, king Josiah who came into power in Judah, he became the king of Judah because at that time the kingdom, um, Israel was divided into two parts. He had the northern and kingdom and the southern kingdom. So what happened Judah, or what happened with Judah? Josiah, King Josiah took over Judah. But prior to King Josiah t- um, taking over, what happened? Judah slipped into, in, into idolatry. They were practicing all forms of idolatry. They were worshiping Baal, they, they were sacrificing, and they turned to the, 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 the devil, Moloch. And that's where they passed the children through the fire. They were burning children and things like that, making um, child sacrifices. So King Josiah came, and he, at that time, <clears throat> King Josiah was trying to get rid of idolatry in, in Judah. So as King Josiah... Uh, I tried to get uh, rid of idolatry. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, came in because uh, what happened there, the people realized, God realized, and the prophet realized that KHS King Josiah was getting rid of idolatry. He was pulling on all the high places, all the places where they, they, they had worship, all the places where they, they sacrificed children and things like that. But the prophet Jeremiah recognized that although King Josiah took down the high places, the people's heart, was still, was still entrenched in idolatry. So here it is now, you may take down, you may remove the facade, you may remove, or, uh, and, and, and King Josiah uh, removed all the facade, he removed everything that the people used to worship, all the visual and paraphernalia and things, but still, in the people's heart, they worship Baal, they, 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 they still had idolatry, they, and, and, and they were still looking for other things, and at that time, in, in, in Judah, they were prosperous. The people were prospering. They, had, they, they just um, built a new temple, brand new shiny temple. The people prospering. Things going good. The economy was good. But their heart, the people's heart, right, were not um, um, separated from idolatry. They still practiced the idolatrous um, 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 system, the behavior, everything. What was based on idolatry, similar to what we experienced today. Um, today. So Jeremiah was saying that, listen, you know what? Repent, people, because God is going to destroy Judah. He's going to destroy the, the temple. He's going to uh, uh, cause you all to be led away captive. Nahum was prophesying against the nations that were attacking Judah. But Jeremiah was speaking to Israel, to uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the Israelites, and telling them to repent. Things were going so nice. They never believed that Babylon was going to come in and capture them take them away and lead them into captivity. And they would have to go away and stay as slaves and live as slaves because, th- because things were so nice. They wasn't listening to anybody. They weren't paying attention. They didn't believe 
Just like we in these days, people do, and didn't believe that a, 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 a virus is going to hit. We know of the, the, of the former president when he disbanded the, 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 um, the, the um, virus or, 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 or communicable and disease um, 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 sector in the United States. They're thinking this would never happen, right? But what happened? It come and they weren't ready, they weren't prepared because they believe it would not happen. The same way people feel that Jesus Christ is not going to come again. You, whether you believe it or not, it doesn't mean that is not true. So <clears throat> this is what was happening in Israel. The people were separated from, um, they were separated. Um, they, 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 um, Josiah took down all the, all the high places, all the, 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 the places where they worship idols, but in their heart, in the people's heart, they still um, w- I went after other gods. So, so, so Jeremiah was prophesying here to the people. 23 years after King Josiah died, Jeremiah was still prophesying to the people. But they wouldn't listen. They didn't believe. The people I didn't believe that God was going to, you know, we are God's people, boy. We are Christians. We are God's people. God ain't going to do that. God is a good God. I've heard many people say, you think my God, who I love, is going to punish people and send them to hell? Yes, because he loved people, he would send them to hell. That is why, no, it would hurt him. But because he loved the good people, those who listen to him, those who don't listen, instead of causing the good ones to go to hell, the bad ones going to hell. And if you don't change your mind, if you don't repent and get your, your life in order, the things that you feel is not going to come upon you is going to come. Who believed COVID was going to come? Who believed the world was going to be in one mess the, and, the, and the way we are, we are in now? So this is what was happening to Israel. They believed that no destruction will come. You wouldn't go to, uh, to thing. No, I wouldn't go to hell, boy. It's no hell, boy. Heaven and hell is right here. But you have to check yourself. And what happened? The Bible says here, cursed. Cursed is the man that trusted in man. They trusted in man. They didn't listen to what God was saying. They trusted in man. You see that word cursed there? That word cursed. It comes from a a Hebrew word, which means without protection. So the curse, cursed be the man, it means without protection, especially in this case, the old Hebrew word it, it, is, is from, um, is from it, it, it means especially protection, especially protection from God. The man who trusted in man is without God's protection. So curse there means without protection. The first word man there comes from a, 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 a word, uh, our original or our old Hebrew word, um, gavar. Now, gavar in, in the Hebrew language, the old Hebrew, the original Hebrew, not the modern Hebrew, the original Hebrew, they only have about 7,500 or 600 words in the Hebrew language. It was really a letters that makes up a, um, a, makes up a, a, a actual word. And when they write the Old Testament, the Old Testament is really one long sentence. So what they have now, they had the Masoret and the Masoretes. What they did, they, 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 they used to um, rewrite the Bible and they put in punctuation marks at a little dot something on top of some of the letters so that you would be able to differentiate. And that is why the, the Hebrew um, sages, the older ones in them, and then you have the ones like um, the, 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 and the rabbis, they have a tradition where they say that each, each, each phrase in the Bible can be interpreted 70 different times. Or the, sorry, I'm saying it different ways. But w- w- what has happened too is that the, the, the old Hebrew language, it was so limited. Or, or one, word, one word had about two or three a different translations. So what they, they had to do, and uh, what the, 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 the Jewish scholars say, is, is to, when you read um, the, and the Bible, or you read the, 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 the text, you have to try and interpret it in the context in which it was written because you might have one word which have three meanings or different meanings. So we have to understand that while we study in the Bible, and that's why the Bible is quick and true and sharp. I don't know it's just it's a living, it's living. The Bible is living. If it's tempted a different interpretations you can get according to the Hebrew scholars from one, one, um, one, one, one phrase or one scripture, then the, 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 you know, it's, it's limitless, it's unlimited. So uh, what has happened here, now that word gavar is, is, a, is a, a Hebrew word for man. We all know Adam, Adam is the Hebrew word for man as well too, right? But this word here, gavar, 
which means, which is translated man, is really leader, governmental leader, religious leader, or, or the leader of a home. So, gabar, so, so cursed is the man or the leader of, the, 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 of a country, the leader of any religious domination or church, or the leader of a home, curses that man, or without protection is that man that trusted in man. The second man there in that script here is really Adam. So is cursed or without protection is the leader, right? Is the leader, whether it's government or religious or, or home or father, whoever it is. Without protection is the man that trusted in man. You understand the point I'm making? That word trusted there means it is, it's, it's untranslated as, as to adhere to or to cling to. So cursed or without protection is the leader right, who cling to the words or the advice or the worldly um, um, resources of man. That is what that scripture there means. So, so, so here it is, um, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah saying, cursed, thus say the Lord, cursed is the leader who trusted in the advice and the counsel of man. So it, 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 he, he got to speak about, um, about the arm of the flesh, but I want to just stick there for a little while. How many times we hear leaders saying, I trust in the signs. I trust in the signs. I trust in this. I trust in that. We, 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 you know, we're following the, 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 and the protocols of the, of, the, of the other countries. And we're following this and we're following that and I trust in the signs. Every government leader, every church leader, every house leader knows. Good ones are that is. And those who have experience knows that no matter, it, it does not matter what you do, you still need that element of grace. In everything that you do, you can't function on your own. There is no short thing. If you, if you look around, a lot of people don't know what's happening. The amount of variants they have going around with this virus. For all you know, the Delta strain in Trinidad and we ain't know nothing yet. And the virus have a habit of sneaking through the borders. And when they come in here, all of a sudden we hear the virus here. It sneak through the borders. We ain't know how it come or, 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 or what happened. And next thing you know, they probably have the virus in Trinidad here. The Delta strain. So we might have to go into a lockdown. Because there's a dangerous strain. Just a few days ago, there were 50,000 cases in the UK. Right? So we have to understand what is happening now. Cursed is the leader who trusted in the advice of man or the counsel of man. What we have to do now is, yes, we trust the science. We trust people. We trust the counsel of man. But we must also trust God. There's always an element of grace. And God is, all, is, is in everything. You can't just trust the, the, the science. Uh, and, and you can look around now and everybody who, who, you know, and the science is saying that, yeah, and you take the vaccine. But after you take the vaccine, there are still people dying from COVID. There are still people uh, um, contracting COVID. You still have to wear the, um, and you still have to wear the mask. You still have to walk around, sanitize and do everything just like if you didn't have the vaccine. Because you could get it. Good? I'm not saying anything against the vaccine. But you still have to trust God. Because if you take the vaccine, you get your double shot and they say, oh, you're protected. No, you are not protected. You are not protected unless you follow the protocols. Same thing uh, uh, and the Bible is saying here. Cursed is the man unprotected or the man who trusted in another man's judgment is unprotected. This is what Jeremiah is saying here. Does say the Lord. Jeremiah wasn't saying this. He was speaking the word of the Lord unto Judah. Okay? So you can't say, yes, I, I trust in this and I trust in that and I believe this and I believe that. No. You follow the protocols, you follow the rules, but you have to keep in mind that there's always an element of grace involved in everything that you do. Don't trust in, in anything. Don't trust in, 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 you know, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but I trust in the Lord because people come to trust. People trust in man. They trust in man's advice. How many times we take advice from men and not God and don't recognize there's always an element of grace God is always in it. He's always protecting you. If you look back, this is um, 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 hindsight is 20, 20 vision. When you look back and see where God takes you from, the kind of things that could have happened, you know, no plan that anybody make is foolproof. God is always the one who has to, 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 to influence, to protect, to guide, to look over. And, I, and the more I study the word of God and the more I spend time, you know, with God and talking to him, the more I recognize where I could have died a long time. A lot of stuff could have happened to me. If I used to listen to the counsel of man. If I used to pay attention to what man say alone. I'll tell you, I'll give you a story. 
years ago, and people are going to the, the, the United States and they want um, and Canada, they, and they're going to Canada. We had a recession here. So people are going to Canada and claiming refugee status. Then they had a next posse you now. They live in Trinidad, they're divorcing, right, each other, and they're going to the States and marrying an American to stay in there. And when, and when they go and they marry the American, and they, they say that they get the papers, but they had to live in the same house with the person, like husband and wife. Because the Americans are stupid, they, they, and they're sending and the custom people to check to see. So all the clothes have to be in the same room. It has to look like if all they're living together and all they're married. So it comes like if they're married, but they're married. But they're, and they're married for convenience. So what happened now? Those who go in Canada on, on refugee status, they go, they settle on the come back. But those who go into America, those who were married had to divorce to go up there and get a job to go and, um, and you know, and, <clears throat> and get the papers fixed up now. Because things hard in train right here for them. But that was right after the boom, we went into a slight recession. Some of us save our money and invest wisely. We took proper counsel and trust God. And there are those who live loose and wild and figure, well, this boom would never done. Just like the, the, the people from Judah. Boy, this boom would never done, boy. We have a good time, oil money flowing, boy. The Prime Minister say, money are no problem. I mean, I understand? But afterwards, at that time, they were saying, money are no problem. The problem is no money. So that was the talk at that time. But the point is, people were listening to the advice of other people. So we go into the States. I go in and divorce my wife and my husband. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I go in up there to live. Right? So, so, and, and, and who advised them? The, the immigration lawyers in the United States advised Trinidadians and other people to do that. They come by me with that. At that time, I didn't own a house, but I had land. I owned two sports cars, my wife and I. We have a business running. Plus, we have our young children. So we had to go and divorce to go to the States. But a certain individual came to me with an idea and said, well, Glenn, you know, you should divorce surely. And both of you will go up there and you remarry and thing. I say, let me tell you something. If I divorce surely, I'm not getting married again. So that was the end of that day one time, right? I grew up in a staunch Catholic home. And my mother and them, is the Pope just had to divorce you. And at that time, me and the Pope wasn't talking. So I know he ain't getting me no divorce, right? And, and as at that time I'm talking about, I don't know now. I don't know for now. But the thing about it is, I wasn't taking no advice from no immigration lawyer. I taking my advice from God. You understand what I'm saying? I'm taking my advice from God. I trust God. And I knew the, the, the bubble or whatever burst because of our experience. So I trust God. I put aside my money. I settled on myself and I go gallivant in Miami every weekend and spend all my money. I had my money. So I didn't have to divorce my wife to go to America. But some people now, a trust God, they divorce their wife. You know what happened? When they divorced their wife and went to America to live the early marriage mashup. Family life mashup. The, the, the children go on astray. The, the, the wife end up with somebody. The husband goes with somebody. They never get back married. I'm together. They never get married. Why? They listen to the advice of people. They listen to the advice of men. They not listen to the advice of God. Yes, you need an element of, of, of human input. But God ultimately is the person who finished the whole thing. He arranged the timing. He's the one who, who look over everything. He knows the, the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning. But you want to go ahead now and trust only in man. You trust in the science, yes. But there's still, there, there's, we still need an element of, of, of grace in that day. So that the timing is going to be perfect. You could be walking along the road now. You could be walking along that road and just one minute, one one, 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 one unguarded moment, unprotected according to what the words say. Because if your curse is the man who trusted in man, right, in the council of man, the one unguarded moment, one unprotected moment from God, you could get whatever it is going wrong and you could die. So don't trust in no, in no man, don't trust in the vaccine alone, don't trust in your mask and, and sanitizer alone. You have to include God in it. Yeah, and, and, and that's what Jeremiah is saying. Judah didn't know they were going to enter captivity. Judah did not know they would have sunk, they would have, they did, and they would have become slaves. Who believed? Who believed Judah would have been in, in, in um, Israel and would have gone to slavery? They built up a, a, a million dollar um, um, temple, that big business running, right? Everything working good. <clears throat> and they beat up a set of nations around. They take charge of the, of the area. God cursing, God punishing the people who attacked them. They were blessed. They were God's people, and you know what happened? Their heart, <clears throat> their heart were not 
with God. Their heart were not on God, idolatry. They're studying how much money they can make. They're studying this, they're studying that. And this is not only for governmental leaders and fathers. I'm speaking to, to a religious leaders, how many church leaders we have who still looking to suck the eye of these people. You want an offering in this kind of time. You want people to sow money in this kind of time. Before you, the church, give back to the people, open the storehouse and bless the people. Now it's not a time for us to be asking people for money. Now we can ask people to bless each other. But what do you want money for this time? You can't even travel. I've seen a set of people asking to give this and give that and give the other. This is a time for us, the church, to give back to the people. This is a time for us to support the people, to big them up, to help them, to give them advice, spiritual advice and things like that. This is a time people are going through depression. This is a time people are going and try everything. Just like them people and them, they, 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 they look like this, 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 and the servant bail and walking over here. But there are a lot of over here going to any country now because people want money. And people have a tendency when they don't have money or they're not getting blessed, what they do? They go and walk over here. They go by this over here man or the over here man. That is what happened. Look around now, man. You will see that is what happened in Trinidad. Not only Trinidad, but all over the world. All them see me, they me. If, if, if that wasn't so, how come all these men who are advertising, um, 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 blessings and, and, and this and that, prospering and, 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 and looking like they're doing a renting place on High Street in San Fernando, they're down in town, they're up in Curep, they're all over the place. If they, if they were not prospering, where, how are they paying the rent? Obviously, people going around and walking over here, they appear to be Christian, they're going to church, but their heart, their heart is not with God. Their heart is only blessing. People do things for a blessing. Many people come, I come here to church at this morning and I always question myself, why am I here? Why am I here? Church is closed down. Why am I coming down here? You know why? I want to bond with God. I want to know God. I, 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 I want to say, Lord, I love you, Father. I just love you and I, I, I invite your presence. I like, I like to be in your presence. I want to serve you. May I come here for no blessing? I bless already, boy. I have three healthy children, four healthy grandchildren. And, and I'm, I'm going into the, I ain't going to tell the, well, you know, just kidnap people, so I ain't going into the financial blessing. But what I want to say now is that I am blessed. I didn't come here for God to bless me with, 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 with finances. If He bless me, fine. But I come here to be with God. I'm not here out of duty. I'm not here because of duty. I am here because I want to be in the presence of God. I want to be in the presence of the person I love. I want to please Him. I want to come here and, 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 and invite other people to come to know Him because the more of us, we have to get in a crowd. Go, and God has be so happy in a crowd. Eh? When everybody come out and everybody praising him and worshiping together, like he has be so happy. He has just come and anoint everybody just so. That's the kind of anointing I like. Everybody fall on their face. So listen, I want to say, I, I, I want to say something, yeah? Right? So I, 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 I um, it's only last night Sarah called me to tell me about um, the this thing. So I am, um, I read my message. I have a long, a long message, but I ain't going to. But the gist of what I want to speak about, first I want to address the leaders. I want to tell the leaders, don't trust in man alone. You wouldn't have the protection of God. Don't trust in man. Don't trust in the science alone. Don't trust in the advice of the technocrats alone. Don't trust in your, in, your, in your instinct alone. Don't trust in any man or anything. You must trust and cling to God. You must call a, 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 another day of prayer. You must call a week of prayer. Not one day alone. You must call a week of prayer. We have to focus on prayer because this ain't over yet. I am sure we have some strains hidden here. Right? Like what has happened in England because you see that trend. And when people feel it's peace and safety, then a sudden destruction comes upon them. We have to be careful and we have to be sober. We have to be vigilant. We can't just go and run out there. We can't just take the advice of people. We have to trust God. We have to trust God. So the leaders, I'm speaking to the leaders, we have to trust God. You have to include that element of grace from God. You alone can't do it. Man alone can't do it. Then the people now, too, I want to tell the people, you cannot come out here and say, I trust in God, I go in the church, and, think, and just like Israel, your heart is not in it. You're, 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 you're in idolatry. You're, you're only coming to church and serving God for what you can get and a blessing. Come to God for what God, for, for who He is. Love Him for who He is, not what He could give you. You have to get rid of this gimme-gimme thing. Tell that Calypso, I can't remember your name now. 
can't remember your name. He, he, he had a line. After this thing, I collapsed. He's like, gimme, 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 gimme. I can't remember if I learned it, but I remember it. Right? Every time you go in my God, now he, we just remind God of that collapse only, and I forget what his name. Where everybody bowling, gimme, 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 gimme. It's time for us to just love him and come and enjoy spending time with God. The last thing I want to say too now is, um, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and Daniel, them fellas prosper. When they went into captivity, they prosper. Right? God honored them. He blessed them, and they prosper. Even while you're going through something and you're in captivity, we have to understand, we have to understand that God will bless you regardless of whatever you see going on. You might be going through a little pressure. You might be going through a little stress right now. We have seen an end of this, uh, end to, to, to what has happened, but God will bless you. God is in it. God is never out of it. God is watching and preparing, and He is looking. So just stand firm, stand strong, and remember who you're taking your advice for. Who is your advisor? Who advising you? Always leave that element of grace in everything that, that you do. Remember that. Okay, so this morning I just want to thank you all for listening. I hope you, this message was a blessing to you. It was only, um, it, I only got it last night and I didn't even have time to study whatever notes I have here, the notes. But, but you see, the thing is, the notes, I might have notes. That is, uh, that is, uh, and and that is in case the, the, the demand fail. But I didn't need to consult the, the, these notes. It's, a, it's about four pages of notes I have on my computer here. I didn't need to consult that. When I come here now, I trust God. Because on Wednesday night now, my whole message got deleted. It didn't save at all. So what I had to do, I had to trust God to, to, to help me remember. Same thing like this morning. You have to trust God. You have to always include that element of grace. Don't trust man alone. Don't trust your own judgment. Okay? Always leave room for God to move, uh, to move and to work. So, Father, I just want to thank you for and giving a servant the opportunity at this morning to speak your words, to stand in your presence, to speak what, what, what is in your heart and what is your desire for your people. And we pray, O oh God, that you continue to bless them. Help them to recognize, O oh God, that you and you alone <clears throat> are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides you are Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. You are Yahweh. You are the God, the all-existing God. You are the God who is going to take care of everybody. Lord, I pray this morning that you remove every burden from on their heart because the anointing destroys the yoke and remove the burden. Remove every burden on their heart and I pray the, your peace to be upon the people, to be upon the hearers, to be upon the nation of Trinidad and Tobago. I pray, O oh God, that you continue to guide our leaders and help them to recognize and understand where they lack uh, knowledge and wisdom and that they may seek your face, that they may seek your face to know the, the heart of the living God and that they will be able to receive a word to take us out of this situation. So we want to thank you, O oh God, and we want to ask you to continue to bless this nation to take us through that, and this week and keep us healthy and safe. This we ask in Jesus' name, and we will see you on Wednesday, hopefully, or Friday, because the way things go in these days with the leadership in this ministry, we all know if we come in or we go in, but we know we will be there, either Wednesday or Friday. So stay blessed, <clears throat> and we'll see you on times of refreshing. On Wednesday, please, God. Stay blessed. We give you praise, God. We give you praise, God. I am blessed. I don't know about you, but I am blessed. I am blessed. Blessed going out, blessed coming in. Uh, thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship Yahweh. We worship the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We worship the I Am that I am. We give you praise, God. Father, we bless you. Just lift those hands up.
Worship him tonight, say, you 